Today I'm going to be talking about the rail extension from the main line of Alaska Railroad to Port Mackenzie and how that is an extraordinarily important project for the Alaskan economy and how important that is for jobs for our people today and in the very near term and how important that is for jobs for our kids and our grandkids in the long term. But before we begin talking about the project itself, let's take a look at the Alaskan economy right now. If there's one word that I would use to describe the Alaskan economy, I would say it's uncertain. There's uncertainty about the gas line construction. We don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, there's uncertainty about energy availability and costs. There's uncertainty about the future of the Trans-Alaska pipeline. Uh, it's down to about 600,000 barrels a day, and the shutdown point is about 300,000 barrels a day. There's uncertainty about the Small Business Administration contracting program for Alaskan Native corporations. And there's uncertainty about the exploration permits for the Chukchi and the Beaufort Sea. But there's two things we know for sure that are not uncertain. One is we have a lack of diversification in our Alaskan economy. And two, we have a lack of transportation infrastructure needed to promote economic development. But the solution to those last two is underway right now. And that is the rail extension from the main line of Alaska Railroad to Port Mackenzie. Here's where the rail extension is going to go. Right now you see up in the north part of this Willow, Houston, and Wasilla, and the southern part of this slide is Port Mackenzie and the Port of Anchorage. The rail extension is going to go on one of these three routes, either the Willow route, the Houston route, or the Wasilla route. That decision will be made within a very short period of time and may have already been made by the time you're looking at this. And that's being made by the Surface Transportation Board. And that's a study that's completed and they're ready to make the announcement as to which of these three routes uh, the rail extension will take. Now here's the opportunities that we have with this rail extension. We start with Live and Good and Fairbanks up in the far north and Port McKenzie down here. This is the main line of Alaska Railroad being extended down to Port McKenzie. And all along these routes, all along this route, are mineral deposits. There's zinc, there's molybdenum, there's copper, there's lead, there's coal, there's limestone, all along those routes. And so what we're, we're preparing for and what we're going to be doing with this extension is offering an opportunity to get those minerals extracted, developed, explored for, and delivered down to Port McKenzie. So what does a rail extension mean to Alaska's economy? Number one, it opens up the interior to resource development. Second, it creates a development corridor along the rail belt for the exploration and extraction of really strategic minerals, and that is lead, zinc, copper, molybdenum, and silver. It facilitates the development of a world-class limestone deposit between Live and Good and Fairbanks. Near Live and Good, there's a limestone deposit of 1.6 billion tons, 1.6 billion tons. And that's enough limestone to provide cement for 15% of America's needs for the next 200 years. And that's north of Fairbanks around Live and Good. What it also does, it also facilitates the development of a cement production plant in or around Fairbanks, someplace between Fairbanks and Live and Good. And it dramatically improves the world competitiveness of Alaskan coal. It knocks about $3 a ton off the transportation cost of Alaskan coal. And very importantly, it significantly reduces the transportation and staging cost of the Alaska gas pipeline construction. Construction companies or, or producers have been talking with the Matsu Borough people, and they believe it will save about $100 million in the cost of construction of the gas line. It also, the offshoot of this, it also dramatically increases employment in the Matsu Borough the Denali Borough, the Fairbanks North Star Borough, and Anchorage. So how does it do this? How does this extension do this? It's the rail extension plus Port McKenzie working together. Now a lot of people don't know about Port McKenzie, but what Port McKenzie is, is the bulk commodities port for the export of minerals, cement, and coal. It provides for the import, storage, and staging of bulk fuels and pipe. And what this can do is pipe comes in in 40-foot section, it can be welded to 80-foot sections, and then put on 90-foot uh, rail cars and brought north to where the pipe is needed. 
It's not a consumer goods port or a container port like the Port of Anchorage. And this is really important to understand. It doesn't compete with the Port of Anchorage. It complements the Port of Anchorage. The Port of Anchorage is primarily an import port and it supplies imports for about 85% of the core part of central Alaska. Uh, if it, if it, you drive it, if you eat it, if you sleep on it, uh, if you use it to build, it comes in through the Port of Anchorage and that will continue. Port McKenzie is an export port and doesn't compete with the Port of Anchorage. Here's a ship that was in this summer to Port McKenzie. It's the deepest draft ship that has ever come up the Cook Inlet. Port McKenzie is a deep water port. Port McKenzie has a 60 foot mean low tide. The Port of Anchorage has a 39 foot mean low tide. Port McKenzie can take the ships that the Port of Anchorage can't take. The Port of Anchorage can do things that Port McKenzie cannot do. Now, it handles, Port McKenzie will handle the largest ships in the world. There are two ship categories that Port McKenzie can handle that can't be handled in the Port of Anchorage. And that is Panamax ships and Cape size vessels. Panamax ships are the largest ships that can get through the Panama Canal. Cape size vessels are ships that cannot get through the Panama Canal and have to go around Cape of Good Hope or Cape Horn. But most important, what we have at Port McKenzie is there's 14 square miles of industrially zoned area. This has the potential to be the main industrial area for all of South Central Alaska and to allow Port McKenzie to become an efficient, large exporter of, of product and increase Alaska's export dramatically. Now here's a picture of Port McKenzie as it stands right now. This is the barge dock and that was completed just this past summer. This is one of the most significant parts of the Port McKenzie development and that is a rail loop. This is a 110 car rail loop. Most mineral aggregate trains have 100 cars and so a 100 car train can come down here, make the turn, come onto the loop the cars to be unloaded will be stopped right here. They can be unloaded. There'll be a conveyor belt going from here right down to the water level, right down to tidewater at Port McKenzie. The train then moves forward 90 feet. The next car is unloaded. There's no, there's no coupling. There's no backup. There's no unhitching. Uh, the train just keeps moving, and it's a very efficient way to unload product. Now, here's what's going on this summer. You'll see some of the things that have happened. This area back up here, is where the loop that I just talked about is going to be. That's going to pull across, circle around here, pull across here, and come right down onto the port. This is the work that's been done this summer on the, the barge dock. And the barge dock will be used for staging, uh, for modules, for pipe, for a lot of product going up to the north slope. You can see the magnitude of this project. Uh, with this fellow standing there, you can see the pilings in the background uh, that they have there. Uh, here is the work that was done this summer. Ships come in and ships go out. And that was actually 120 days work in 12 and a half seconds. So we cut that down just a little bit. We didn't work quite that fast. But now that barge dock is completed and ready to be put to work. But the main part of the work is done on the rail extension itself. Uh, moving and connecting the Alaska Railroad main line uh, to Port McKenzie. This is the work that's been done this summer that's going on. And you'll see in a minute the result of all this work. Here's a good overview of what's happened. Over in this area is the rail loop coming in. Uh, we have along here the rail bed that's going to be going north to connect to the main line of the Alaska Railroad. And you'll get an idea of the size of this work and the amount of work that's taken place here. You can see the small trucks in the lower right hand side of your screen, or the big trucks I guess, in the lower right hand side of your screen that look very, very small on that large road bed. It's both a road bed and it will be a railroad bed too. It's going to be going north from this point, circling around, and you see the amount of bed that's been created. From there it goes north on up to the main line of the Alaska Railroad and on up through uh, Healy, Denali, and Fairbanks up toward Live and Good and Delta.